Hello, one and all, and welcome to Dub Talk, the podcast where some fellow anime nerds get together and give their opinions on a recent dub announcement or review the dub of a series recently released on DVD and Blu-ray. I'm Stephanie, and joining me, as always, is our resident master of manliness, Spaceman Hardy. Yo! <laughs> and as for our special guest today, this would technically be considered his second appearance on the podcast, but because of some, um technical issues we had with the prison school episode thanks Besides noah that, <laughs> shh, we already talked to him about this yeah. <laughs> um but because of those technical issues uh you actually get to meet him today from the fandom post please welcome roots of justice hey 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 yay hello <laughs> I, at least for me this is the first time i get to talk to you like this so <laughs> it's an honor to be here Yay! Thank you for being here! Um, as for the topic of today's episode, the three of us are going to be tackling our first Sentai Filmworks casting announcement, as well as our very first series that's airing on the Toonami block, Parasite. Yeah. So, that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, as always, we'll be covering the announcement with our own predictions, if we have any, opinions on the actual casting, and our first impressions of the first three episodes of the English dub, which... Since it's on Toonami right now, that's why it kind of took a while for us to actually make the episode, because we were waiting for the episodes to come out. Uh, now, to be fair, the official press release that Suntai po- uh, put out only really had the casting for the first episode. However, we're not going to be following the list entirely, as there are characters from the second and third episodes that do play major roles that we can just kind of talk about today as well. So we're just going to stick to the main casting and keep away from characters, you know, like uh, the Parasite Dog or the uh, the newscaster. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> we, the... totally, we totally have to talk about Chris Patton as the newscaster. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that was announced. <laughs> there was a handful, like, newscaster, like, teacher, well, big father. Look. I'm like, yes, we need to talk about all of these. But yeah, we're going to try and stick to the main casting. <laughs> mm. So... I think we are good to go from here. Are we ready to start then? Absolutely. All right. So let's start with the ADR director and the script writers, because this one so far has three writers attached to it. Uh, I actually got, I actually got this one right um, okay. as far as the ADR director is concerned. So if you guys want to go, who you protect like, I For me, in term, if you're looking at my predictions, I only ended up doing predictions for four characters. Mm. I didn't get to finish my list of predictions, so I have nothing for director and writers here. And also part of it is because I'm not too familiar with Sentai's pool of talent in terms of both directors and voice actors. Talent in qu- in quotation marks. Some of them are pretty good. Come on now, you, you yeah. gotta admit that. Some of yeah. them are good. Yeah, they, we and are past... And they're improving quite a bit. Mm-hmm. From... We thankfully are past the uh, Stephen Foster era. Thank you, Lord. Because I watched Princess Resurrection a few weeks ago for another podcast, and my God. You know, wh- I found it really funny listening to the dan- the uh, Dialogue Lovers episode where Gigi was go- all she was talking bad about Stephen Foster, and then she goes around and says, uh, well, Red Garden was a really good dub. Who do you think directed that dub? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, know- Gigi, you got called out, man. <laughs> <laughs> I should note that there are some Stephen Foster dubs that actually ended up really good. In particular, well, yeah. for Marty High School, and I actually did like the Devil May Cry dub. Um, also, uh, Le Chevalier Deon was a mm. really good one, too. Le Chevalier Deon is a good one. Mm. I've never yeah. actually seen that yet, and I it, have intended to for a while. It's a pretty good show. Yeah. Um, Falls but, apart in the end. But, uh, yeah, it kind of does. But, um, but I would say eight times out of ten, you when you have Stephen Foster involved, it's not gonna end well. <laughs> yeah. but, Rest um, in peace, Penguin Drum. Oh. <laughs> we and don't he, talk about Penguin. We drum. don't talk about Penguin Drum dump. <laughs> anyway, uh, I know I didn't have any director or writer predictions. Apparently, Hardy got something right. Roots, did you have any predictions? Uh, yeah. I um for the script, I basically had Clint Bickham because I'm. Again, not like you, not very good with Sentai dubs. Right. And I, I probably had a reason for it when I wrote it down, but I don't remember it. 
But uh, for director, I had Chris Ayers. Because um, okay. he's, he's been really good with horror dubs, I have to say. In particular, uh, Another is one of my favorites out of Sentai. I actually haven't seen the dub for Another yet. I've, I've seen the show, but not the dub. I've heard... I've heard interesting things about it, though. Yeah, um... Greg Ayers sold me on it at Animane, like, two years ago. That works. Um, so anyway, the ADR director is Kyle Jones. Kyle, Kyle Col- Kobe Jones. Jones yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And the script writers, uh, Kyle Jones is one of them. Uh, Matt Greenfield is another one, but only for the first two episodes so far. And Tiffany Grant is the third scriptwriter for the series. Uh, in terms of other work, Kyle Jones is very much well known for directing at this point. He's uh, I mean, he's he, been he, on a roll lately. He's oh, just he's, he's been on a roll. Yeah, like yeah. he does have voice roles, but a lot of it is just really, really small, minor ones. So I would say he's probably more well known for directing at this point. Yeah, I mean because. He, he's been directing so many of Sentai's big hits, like mm-hmm. he did Log Horizon, and then right after that he did uh, No Game, No Life, and now no he's Game, doing, no Life. And now he's doing Parasite. Gotcha Among Crowds. Gotcha Among Crowds. Akame, Akame Kill. Kill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he's doing a lot of the larger ones. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Kino's Journey. That oh! Was a good one. He's the director for Kino's Journey. He is the director for Air, actually. Interesting. Um... Vern Hilder in the Darkness, that's another new one. I haven't heard anything about the dub for that yet. Well, that's the one that Jamie Markey went to uh, Houston Yep, that's to her, do. First, her first Sentai show. Right. That's another thing about Kyle is he's he's good about... He's sort of like the McFarland of Sentai, Sentai. film works in mm-hmm. that he brings in all this outside talent. And, the, and he, I think he's um, he's actually working with Rachel Robinson on a new dub. And so, oh, really? and so, yeah, that'll be the first time that Sentai ever actually has an actress who used to be in L.A., then Dallas, then Houston. So That'll be interesting, then. Yeah. And then he does have other sc- script writing credits. He also has a few other script writing credits for Akamega Kill. Uh, oh, mother of God. Why is he the director and script writer for Amnesia? <laughs> why? Uh, why, Kyle Jones? Fuck that show. Someone gotta do it. I understand, but fuck that show. Um, he also has done the scripts for Gintama the movie, uh, Kino's Journey, again, Log Horizon, again. He's the ADR director and the script writer for Love, Chinobu, and Other Delusions. Um, Majestic Prince, No Game, No Life, again. <laughs> so he, he's done a good amount of their of Sentai's larger shows, mm-hmm. which helps a lot. And like you said, the fact that he's able to bring in some extra talent over from the Funimation pool, he, he is essentially the Mike McFarland of Sentai. Yeah, his reach isn't as big as McFarland because McFarland brings in Canadian actors when he feels like it. Yeah, Canadian, like New York, freaking LA. He, he Mike McFarland is like everywhere. Yes. <laughs> he has connections everywhere and it's ridiculous how many that man probably has. But yeah, Kyle Jones in a sense is that same way. Um, and as for Matt Greenfield and Tiffany Grant, uh, Matt Greenfield, he's done a good amount of scripting work as well for, let's see, we have... Yeah. Greenfield's one of the bigger names over the in the Houston um, dub community. He was a big, big, uh, big name back in the ADV days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. he's done quite a few roles, mostly smaller ones, but he's... In terms of script, though, we have Razafon. Mm. Oh, uh-huh. that's one I just spotted. Uh, we have, let's see, The Wallflower, Vampire Hunter D, for the, the new Sentai dub. Mm-hmm. That's the OVA, yep. Um, let's see, Noir... Um, <laughs> <laughs> he worked on TTS Air Bats. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's not forget the elephant in the room here Neon Genesis Evangelion. He was oh, a fuck everything. Um, he's also done the script for Martian Successor Nadesco. Infinite Sh- no, he's a director for Infinite Stratos. Pardon me. He did the script for Gunsmith Cats Ooh. and the director for Gunsmith Cats, the OVA. Um,. Oh, fuck everything. He's a director and a scriptwriter for Gantz. <laughs> what? That fucking mess. <laughs> I actually kind of like Gantz. I only saw, like, clips here and there, and I'm like, I am never watching this shit. 
it's it's pretty bad. It's he's also the director and the scriptwriter for Excel Saga. That's well, actually impressive. Has... Yeah. So that's so he has a good amount of credits there. And then Tiffany Grant. If you know Tiffany Grant, you probably know her more for her voice work. Cause Lord knows how many roles she has. In particular though, Neon Genesis Evangelion is Asuka. Mm-hmm. We have Asuka, but um, in terms of staff roles, she doesn't have a lot under her belt in terms of staff, um, but it's mostly script writing work. So she's done scripting for Comic Party Revolution, uh, let's see, Infinite Stratos, uh, let's see what else here, uh, Parasite. Not a lot of scripting works, actually. Tears of Teria, Teria and um, The Wallflower, yeah. as well as All oh My Goddess Flights of Fancy. Um, so she has a few scripting credits, but you probably know Tiffany Grant more for her voice work rather than her writing work. Um, so how do we feel about this combination of script and directing Honest, for the show so far? Honestly, in the three dubbed episodes that I watched, I don't really have many complaints. Um, Neither do I, honestly. There were a few lines that I thought were kind of, kind of unrealistic, um... But, in a, I mean, you can tell that they're really putting their efforts into this because it's on Toonami. Mm -hmm. and you can't just... I mean, if Akame Got Kill is the test, is the guinea pig for Sentai for Toonami, Parasite is, like, mm -hmm. the big one, really. Right. Yeah. So, they ha they do have to, like, at least be moderately careful with it. Mm -hmm. So that way they can keep an audience and, and get enough... I don't know. I don't want to say. I don't want to say like publicity or funds. So that way they can continue to put shows on Toonami. Because mm -hmm. Sentai again, they're late to the party in the Toonami dub thing. But that's mostly because they probably didn't have the budget or the money to do it at the time. Well, I think also there were sort of, um, from what I understand, there was sort of like some animosity between Adult Swim, William Street, and and Sentai for or the ADV crowd for a long time. I think that's mm -hmm. just now starting to get. Clear it up, and that's that's basically just hearsay, anyways. But I think that might have had something to do with it. Right. There was also talk of like slot politics and all that. They were probably just looking for a place to put a Sentai show. That's fair. Anyways. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I got, I was so happy about with the script. <laughs> um, I got excited that they kept the whole. Um, what was it? I think it's episode three. And episode two or three, and the whole sexual mating situation. <laughs> that whole shenanigans. Where Shinichi's in the bathroom taking a pee. Yeah. And Migi's like, Shinichi, I need to test something. I want to make your sexual organ erect. And then Shinichi's <laughs> like, what the fuck? Because, again, it was a thing in the Japanese, and I love that they managed to keep that, and it was fantastic. And the dude walks over to him and is like, dude, I can't take a pee if I'm next to a guy talking to his pecker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was the best thing ever. And then there was also episode one with the uh, with the whole snake thing. Or I think they mm -hmm. called it a worm in the dub. I th yeah, I think they called it a worm. Mm -hmm. But they what? still kind of kept the whole, the whole joke in there, which impressed yeah. me. I mean, I, th I think in that case, calling it a worm rather than a snake, if because my memory of the show is bad and I haven't even finished the damn simulcast yet, changing it from like if they did change it from like snake to a worm, it makes a little bit more sense considering Shinichi at the time does not like bugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it makes more sense and in it, terms of the dub. It looks more like a worm than it does a snake anyway because it's so small. Right, right. But I think it's doing good so far. Mm -hmm. I know this for me, um, as far as I'm aware of, this is the first um, Kyle Jones dub that I'm encountering, uh, directed by him, and I think it's doing good so far. Yeah. He's def they're definitely off to a great start with the, mm -hmm. with the directing and the writing. Though there are occasionally the performances in the dub where I'm like, what the fuck, it makes me cringe, but mm. those are just the small, small ones. <laughs> Like, the one-off ones that maybe have, like, a line or two, and it makes me, like, why? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you find those in every dub, almost. Yeah, you do. Like, you're not going to escape that. Mm -hmm. um, at least it's not as terrible as uh, the Princess Resurrection dub, where the little kid... In the friggin' second episode, guy falls out of the tree dead, and the kid is, like, bluntly like, Oh, wow, he's dead. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? 
as blunt and nonchalant as can be. But anyway, um, but that's a Stephen Foster dub. Go away. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is off to a good start. And I think it might potentially be in the hands of the right people. Mm-hmm. We'll just especially, have to see how it goes from here. Yeah, especially with, again, Kyle Jones seems to be the big director of Sentai at this point. Right. And he's been getting a lot of experience lately with some of the larger shows, including Akame Gakkeo, which is another, again, Toonami show. So I think it's heading in the right direction mm-hmm. as of right now. So, casting. <laughs> so we figured out we want to talk about at least eight characters. And at this point, you could basically pair them off. So that's what we're going to do with all of them. <laughs> we're going to pair all of them off. So we're going to start with... Um, Shinichi's parents, Kazuyugi Izumi and Nobuko Izumi. Um, I did not have predictions for these two. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else did. Uh, for his dad, I didn't really have any predictions for his mom, but for his dad, I pretty much just threw a dart and said, uh, it's, it'll probably be someone like uh, John Swayze or someone like that. I think John Swayze ended up being... He was a different character. He's, he was a different he, character. He's the I think teacher. He ended, yeah, but he ended up being the teacher from the first episode. Mm-hmm. I was trying to think in my head, I'm like, wait, was that John Swayze or John Germillion? Because there was um, another character at the beginning of the episode, the the dad that's a parasite, and he's try- and he's like talking and eating his wife and all that shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's that John was, Germillion. That, that's what I was say. It was, I was like, John Germillion or John Swayze? I'm like, there's too many Johns! <laughs> what is this? But yeah. I mean, I know I didn't have any predictions for the parents. What about you, Roots? Um, I had uh, David Wald and Allison Sumrall. Uh, I basically looked at ANN, looked for actors who played general mom and dad characters, and took it from there. Well, sir, you at least got half of that right. Indeed, I did. Uh, <laughs> you did. Because <laughs> um, Kazuyuki Izumi is actually voiced by Rob Mungle. Mungo! Mungo! And Nobuko Izumi is voiced by Allison Sumrall. Uh, so, Rob Mungo, <laughs> which I real I found out today, because I was like, I'm going to look for headshots for these people, because I know some of these I don't have. He's a freaking comedian, too. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. He's he, been around he, a long time. He's been around time. a long time. He has a nice, long resume. Mm-hmm. But, um, he has, he has credits for Akame Ga Kill, so that explains a lot. Uh, Angel Beats, uh, let's see, Bodacious Space Pirates, Devil May Cry, Dream Eater Mary, Excel Saga. Oh my god, he's Pedro from Excel Saga. That's where I've heard him. I am in love now, because <laughs> Pedro is fantastic. Um, Gogolo 13, Gunsmith Cats. What else? Kiba, Lady Death. He played the crazy thing with. Covered in breasts in Mardok Scramble. Flesh the Pike. If you've seen Mardok Scramble, you would realize. That's. Uh, I have the first film. I haven't seen it yet. I need to get yeah. around to those. Yeah. He played Mr. Eight in One Piece. Or Igaram. 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 There it is. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yep. Uh, he's in Red Garden. He has done uh, Basic- the, soup, the ba- Super Milk Chan show. <laughs> Basically, if it was an ADV or Sentai dub, he's in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not a major role, you know, that's why we kind of came up with the meme of Mungo. Because <laughs> he's in everything. Yeah. Yes. But, um, and then Allison Sumrall, she, she has a decent amount too, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has done... She's been in Air, she's in uh, Angelic Lair, Azamanga Dayo. She was in the original Ushio and Tora OVAs. Mm-hmm. Which Comic it- Party Revolution. Uh, let's see, what else? EF, A Tale of Melodies and Memories. Uh, Fate Kaliad, Liner, Prisma, Ilya. Uh, Girls Wound Panzar. Leviathan, Last Defense. I'm just throwing out a few here. Maria Holick, mm-hmm. uh, Mav Love Alternative, Nobunaga the Fool, uh, Five Brain Puzzle of God, uh, let's see, Saint Saya, Super Gals, Tamako Market, uh, Ushio and Tora, like you said, Hardy, uh, and the world God only knows. So, both of these two have, have done a lot. Mm-hmm. Rob Bungle, I do enjoy as the dad. Yeah. I, 
I enjoy it yeah. so far. Allison Sumrall, I think part of it's because I've never really heard of her before, but I'm kind of like, eh. Well, I mean, I'm a little eh with her right now. Yeah, Allison has one of those voices that just doesn't really stand out very much. No. Like, she, you know, that's why she plays a lot of maternal characters is because, well, a, a lot of background characters, too, is she just doesn't have a voice that really lends itself to, like, main character status. Which is kind of interesting, considering... Because I know Roots will understand when I say this. The story that happens with Shinichi's mother, though. Yeah. Because I don't want to spoil it for Hardy. Oh, I know what happens. Oh, you know. You already know yeah. what happens to her, yeah. then. So your mother's spoil- died. Your mother's dead. So your mother ain't living no more. So, yeah. Spoilers. Shinichi's mom dies. Sorry. Spoilers for if you haven't seen the show. Um, Considering that, I'm curious to know what's going to happen afterwards. But at the same time, I'm like... I don't know if it's gonna fit, cause when I was watching the Japanese, Shinichi's mother in the Japanese, it was memorable to me. Bitch made me cry when she when she died. So I and so far, Summerall, I don't, I don't know. It's not there as of right now to me. That's just my opinion, but. Well, I didn't have any problems with it. I mean, because as of now. Well, I, mean, I know the character becomes a bigger plot point later, mm-hmm. but as of now, it's just sort of a background sort of thing. And I mean, yeah. it, I, I don't have any real problems with it. Yeah. Yeah. Mungle is always going to be Mungle. <laughs> Mungle is Mungle. <laughs> Mungle is Mungle. He's like Newman. You know, every time you hear him, he's like Mungle. And <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes Mungle can do, he will do a role I honestly do not think he fits him um i think here he works just fine so yeah i think he works as the dad really well Mm -hmm. i mean for the time being for the episodes that the three of us have watched they're both the mother and the father are basically shoved into the background and yeah which which in that regard it makes sense but again i'm in in the case of some I'm curious to know what's going to happen with her performance when he gets to the point for the mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mungle, I think, uh, Mungle, I think he's going to handle himself fine. Yeah, with what happens. especially, you know, the major, major role he plays in the second half of the series. Mm-hmm. But with some role, I just don't know how that's going to go. And the first three episodes, I know she's supposed to be just in the background, but the p- performance so far... Make, has me a little worried about what's gonna, about how she's going to portray it later. But, we'll I don't just know. Have, have, to, have to take a wait-and-see approach. Yeah, basically, yeah. I'd have to wait and see how it goes. But that's just my only concern, considering what happens to Shinichi's mother down the road. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yay! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those are the parents. Um, so, who do we have next? I believe we have... Ryoko Tamiya and Mr. A. We, these two fuckers. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. These two motherfuckers have the, has the sex. Yeah. <laughs> they has the sex. Yeah. That's pretty convenient, you know, getting knocked up on the first try. <laughs> I yes. mean, yeah. I mean, uh... unless they were trying, like, multiple times. We just don't, we don't know that, but. <laughs> there are only um, so many times the man can, you know. <laughs> I speak from experience. Because <laughs> we're totally yeah, going to have sex yes, conversation right now. <laughs> right, yes. When yeah. a mommy and daddy love each other the very spirit much. Is, yeah, the bow spirit wow, is willing. Wow, wow, <laughs> yeah, it gets to a point the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So. <laughs> So. Death by Snoo Snoo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so Ryoko and Mr. A. Ryoko Tamiya. Um, she is also uh, a par- parasite carrier, essentially. Both mm. of them are. Yes. Um, in Ryoko's case, she's more interested in blending in, though. And learning about humanity and society. So she takes the role of a math teacher at Shinichi's high school. Uh, Mr. A, on the other hand, uh, Mr. A gets Ryoko pregnant, as we just discussed. Um, but He's all about just going around killing and eating people. Yeah. 
essentially by the end of the third episode, he's the baddie of the week. Because mm-hmm. um, he goes and attacks the school. And um, again, we've only watched the first three episodes of the dub. Though I do, though Root and I are, are probably, and I don't know if Hardy is aware of what happens to him. But. Oh, I know. I've I've watched the first four episodes in subtitles. So. Aha! Good then. Mm-hmm. So you do know. But yeah, um, Mr. A doesn't necessarily have a huge role. He just ends up as a baddie of the week, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is basically a plot point for Ryoko. Mm-hmm. Um, so predictions for Ryoko, Mr. A. I had none. <laughs> I uh, I did have predictions. Uh, for Ryoko, I predicted the my uh, my forever crush, Miss Shelley Colleen Black. Mm, there you go. And for Mr. A, I predicted John Gramillion. Oh, that would have been a good one. Yeah, because he seems to have sort of that inhuman, just, um, you know, talking just like this sort of voice when he needs to. So Yeah, and... and- very matter of fact. Though, even though he didn't get the, the role of Mr. A, mm-hmm. you can tell that still in the first episode. Again, right, yeah. Where he's that father with that the first parasite in the first two seconds that eats the mom. Mm-hmm. And they cut back to a couple times. So you can tell, he was good at that one. Yeah, yeah especially like when that. he was kind of using the, the television to learn English, or Japanese, I should say, but. Yeah. yeah. Daddy, daddy, where's mommy? <laughs> Like trying to imitate the TV and then the daughter, and he was good. Yeah, it really that really stood out for me. That um, that quite literally gave me chills. Yeah, no. I was like, good on you, good on you, Mr. Gramillion. Okay, Ruth, did you have predictions for Ryoko and Mr. A? Yes, I did. Um, for Mr. A, I had uh, David Matranga, just Ooh. because he has he has the very deep register. That That's I, interesting. That I think would have fit Mr. A pretty well. And uh, for Ryoko, I had uh, Jessica Cavello. Mainly, you know, because of the, the Hanji Zo in Attack on Titan. The two mm. characters are kind of similar in their in their goals, so I, I figured That's that fair. would be... That's a fair... That would be a pretty good fit, actually. Um, but we're all wrong. Uh, of course. Of course. Um, Ryoko Tamiya is voiced by Joanne... Bonasso, Bonasso, Joanne Bonasso, pardon me with names, and Mr. A, lo and behold, is voiced by David Wald. <laughs> Hi, David Wald. Been wondering where this guy's been hiding. I think for in David Wald's case, because um, if you don't know who David Wald is, this motherfucker been doing a lot <laughs> lately. <Yeah. laughs> um, but between both Sentai and Funimation. So he's done roles in Attack on Titan, The Book of Vantora, uh, Diabog Love First, as we talked about <laughs> him as Reiji in that episode. He's... Oh, fuck. I did... <laughs> I just saw Dramatical Murder listed under his credits, and I realized I need... that episode sh- is going to happen soon, so I just spoiled myself dun, a little dun, on that one. Dun. Whoops. Um, <laughs> he's he's Gaggio for Fairy Tale. Uh, that's probably one of his larger roles that he's well known for. Um, he's in Ghost in the Shell Arise. He is in Gein Saga. Doctor, uh, he's a- Dr. Ozaki from Shiki. Yep, that's pro- that's what that one's one of my and, favorites. And um, uh, what's his name? I I don't think it was Iceberg. I think uh, who was his number two in uh, One Piece? Uh, the guy the guy with the rigging, who who uses rigging as a weapon. Um, uh, the only credit he has under One Piece is Polly. Polly, there we go. Yep. He's also the lead for Five Brain Puzzle of God, uh, which is one of the more odd choices. Um, yeah. take, he's a, also, take a he, shot every time he says puzzle in that show. <laughs> he, he's <laughs> also be in, dead. Yes. He'd be dead. He's also in Toriko as well. Yeah. Um, no, so he has a variety of roles between those two companies. Yeah. No, I was. I made a joke. You know how um, for shows that have a lot of F-bombs in them, like Black Lagoon and Panty and Stocking, they'll do like a YouTube, the effing short version. I mm-hmm. thought it would be funny to do one for Puzzle of God and have it the puzzlingly short version where it's just nothing but them saying puzzle, 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 puzzle over and over again. For, that would have been fantastic. Because they I, say that word like seriously like 800 times over the course of that show. You I said s- Panty and, you said Panty and Stocking for a second. I'm like, wait, wasn't David Wald the fucking car? But then I'm like, wait, no, that was Brandon Potter. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I still need to get around to Five Brain because I've heard it's like really silly fun. I've watched the first six episodes of the first season 
and I own the entire first season of the show. <laughs> it actually kind of is silly fun, really. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And for David Wald, it's because he voices the lead. Oh, my God. His voice is so different. Yeah, you would not expect that voice no. to come out of him. You would not expect that to come out of him. And this is after I saw... This is after I saw him in, um, in Shiki. And when I first saw Fiber, and it was my first time at Anime Boston, actually. And I had bought the first half of the first season from Sentai Filmworks in their booth after seeing it um, in a video showing. But yeah, you could not... You would never be able to pick up David Wald in that at all. Without, like, looking up beforehand and be like, Oh, he's the lead. Okay. Um... As for Joanne Bonas Bonasa. Bonasa. Sorry, names. Um, she's actually fairly new. Mm -hmm. Uh she uh is mostly yeah, she's really much, pretty much a new stuff. She has done Black Bullet. She was recently announced, actually, for Chaika the Coffin Princess. Uh Devil Survivor 2, Dog and Scissors, Fate Kaliad, uh Ghost Hound. Canon 2006. Uh, she was the lead character in Venus vs. Virus, that terrible mm -hmm. show. Oh, yeah. Um, and then she just has a variety of small roles in Air, Sunday Without God. She's the grandmother in Super Sonico. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on that, Doug. <laughs> Why do you think I brought it up? No, I'm kidding. Mm. Um, and she's also done roles in Red Garden, mm. uh, Gotcha on Crowd, small things like that. So she's still fairly new. Um, well, I mean, she's been around since the ADV days. She just hasn't done much. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. She she just doesn't have a lot under her name. In terms of performances, David Wald is menacing as fuck. Another like, one of the, the roles that gave me chills in the show. Mm-hmm. Which, which works for him, considering his natural tone of voice anyway. So it, it kind of works having him as one of these more parasitic characters. For me, it's like considering, because this is what I know him for, Dr. Ozaki from Shiki, Kaito Daimon in Five Brain, Gajio from Fairy Tail, and then recently, you have fucking Reiji from Diabolic Lovers. You're never gonna get over that, are you? <laughs> Not as much as Josh Greeley's Subaru, but okay, <laughs> yes. Um, but you know, I, then, I do want to note, though, the... Uh, you know, the the almost robotic tone of voice that the parasites have? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that's very easy to do. And he nails yeah. it. He nails it pretty good. I mean, granted, Mr. A is at least further developed more compared to, like, the parasitic dog or, um... Or the blonde-haired guy. Or the blonde-haired guy or John Gramillion's character for, like, five seconds in the first episode. Mm -hmm. But he still has that quality to him. A little bit. Right. So, for David Wall, the Mr. A, menacing as fuck. I'm like, dude, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I used to like you and all these awesome things, but now we have... You scare what? me. We have, we have what? We have sexy sounding David Wall in Diabog Lovers. Now we have a menacing bastard in Parasite. So I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> But I'm I'm okay with it. It's it's nice having well, it, some variety and versatility. That's besides, just he's only around for two episodes anyway, so. <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he may as well have fun with it. Mm. As for jo Joanne, because I am not even going to try pronouncing her last name again. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was good. It uh, you know I, I actually I confused her with Maggie Fleckno for a second. Yep, I remember. Yeah. yeah. You, you when you when you asked me, you're like, I think that's Maggie Fleckno. I. I was like, really? And then I looked at the... Because they, because obviously every week, as new voices are mentioned and recognized in the episodes, a yeah. will update the cast list. Right. They changed it for Ryoko. So I'm, I'm like, huh, it's someone else then. Mm. <laughs> and at first, I thought it was Maggie Flecknoy maybe under a pseudonym or a different name, but I was like, no? Okay. No. Yeah, I, <laughs> um, I, I think it was a tweet that somebody misinterpreted. And I think that's what caused the confusion. That might have. Because Maggie Flecknoe, if I remember correctly, um, she is actually cast as Kana Kimishima. We're not going to get to talk about her, um, but shes I think she's at least going to be appearing in the following episodes rather soon. Yeah, yeah, episode five, which, as of this recording, aired last night. 
I, mm-hmm. I think that's when she first shows up. Something like that. So, yeah, we're not going to get to talk about her today, but yeah, that's Maggie Fleckenway's Kana. Um, which, for me, it's going to be inter- if If I do decide to finish the dub, it's going to be interesting because the only other Maggie Fleckenway role I know, again, Diabog Lovers, and I hated it. <laughs> well, she's also the lead role in Amnesia, so apparently she likes playing these stupid girls who enjoy being tortured. <laughs> Fuck amnesia, though. At least in Diabolic Lovers, the main heroine has a fucking name. Yeah. But anyways, back to... Anyway. Back, back, to, jo- back to Joanne and Ryoko. <laughs> yeah. No, I liked it. I thought it was it was kind of... Had this dark sultriness to it. A dark sultriness. And considering how developed Ryoko is as a parasite, mm-hmm. she compared like compared to um david wald or any of the other parasites we've mentioned before mm-hmm. she's less she has less of that robotic tone of voice to her yes it's more methodical and less mm-hmm. robotic methodical and she can blend in rather well mm-hmm. but yeah. she's still also very dark and menacing you know what vibes i kind of got from it what uh have any have either of you seen the movie species no no i skipped out on that one. Oh, are you talking about um what was her name? Six, I believe it was. I Natasha, I want to say Nat- that was it. It was I. It Natasha was a long Henstridge. time ago on Sci-Fi Channel. That's like I wouldn't know. <laughs> like I, I remember basics, the basics from that movie. It kind of gave me similar vibes. So right, kind of Na- Natasha Henstridge type of vibes. Right. Yeah. That works. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I would definitely say. David Wald and Joanne as Ryoko and Mr. A mm-hmm. works. Yeah. I, I uh, like it. Uh, just like the cast so far, I mean, really. I'm just interested to see how she ha- jo- Joanna handles um the treatment of her baby. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, Hardy doesn't know that far ahead, but... Um, yeah. I have spoiled well, quite a few things. Yeah. I've, I've at least seen some of those scenes where she treats the baby. Well, mm. the manga treats it let's just say differently oh differently good or differently bad i'm just gonna leave it at differently (laughs) oh okay (laughs) okay foreshadowing (laughs) dun 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 but um anyway let's move on to uh two uh, uh two female characters one of which is the love interest um so we have sautame murano and yugo tachikawa uh, Sotome is the, again, love interest for Shinichi, and Yuko, uh, she is friends with both Sotome and Shinichi, and she is in Shinichi's class as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, any predictions for these two? I at least had a prediction for Murano, but I didn't have anything for Yuko. Uh, honestly, I predicted the same actress for both roles for some strange reason, because I've seen her play characters very similar to both of these characters. Mm-hmm. In other things, um, I was saying either one of them could have been Brittany Karbowski because she played yeah, a similar. Right. Yeah, she played a similar character to Yuko in the movie Colorful, and she played a similar. She's played similar characters to uh, to uh, was well, Satomi in shows like, say, Cat Planet Cuties and other things like that. Right. So I'm like, both could be Brittany Karbowski. And you know what? I had mm-hmm. Brittany Karbowski listed for Satomi as well, which oh, is kind of funny considering how things turned out, but... <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, again, most... Again, I didn't have many predictions for people, mm-hmm. but most of that was chalked up to the fact that I don't know Sentai's talent pool very well. Um, but I do know, since she has done Sentai, uh, uh, Sentai devs before, particularly Log Horizon, um, I put Jade Saxon in as Murano. Hmm. That's who I put in there. Um, Yuko, I didn't have anything. I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, I I had Hillary Haig down just because you know. That's fair. Though so Hillary Hillary Haig is uh, ended up as a different role actually, another classmate of Shinichi's if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um. So who ended up getting those roles? Yuko Tachikawa is Terry Doty, and Satomi Murano is Lucy Christian. So Terry Doty. Uh, she has done, she's done quite a few things yeah, at this she, point. She started out in the background, um, like on staff for the most part, mm-hmm. but, uh, 
And she hosted the that anime show, which was a podcast with J. Michael Tatum for several years. Right. Uh, but um, just now she's starting to get cast in more and more things. So, mm-hmm. yep, yeah. things such as Assassination Classroom, uh, Corpse Princess, Dance in the Vampire Bund. Uh, Laughing Under the Clouds is probably one of another one of the more recent ones, along with the Assassination Classroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, Muv Love, Okami-san and her Seven Companions, uh, Shigi Bonahime. She was in Level E as the kid who looks like Gon. From, yeah, uh, part of the reason I wanted yep. Funimation to get Hunter Hunter. Yeah. Yep. She's also in Ultimate Otaku Teacher as Makina's younger brother. Uh, she's also done. She's also done a variety of smaller roles in Tokyo Ghoul, Show by Rock, uh, Panty and Stocking, uh, Level E, like you said. Uh, but she she's slowly been getting a bit more exposure and a bit more ground mm-hmm. between the two studios. And in her case, I think it really she really works here. I think she's good for this particular character. Yeah, I've I've relayed my issues with Terry Doty in the past. Mm-hmm. Is that I think along with Ryan Reynolds, she's much better at playing little boy characters than she yep. is at actual yeah. wi- actual female characters. Because right. I listened to her in Corpse Princess, and she was so bland. It was just bland city. And, and now that I can listen to her as a female character, and it sounds better, I think it's just she didn't have much experience back then. It might have been what it is, yeah. yeah. Like, now that she's slowly getting more exposure. Mm-hmm. And... In the same vein, Ryan Reynolds is kind of the same way, because um, she voices uh, Itolai in Arslan. Itwa, yeah. It, Itwa, bleh. Names. Well, um, and there's something to that, too. Right. That uh, kind of spoilery. Okay, spoiler warning. Mm. This this kid, who's a knight for Lith... Ah, Lith- uh, fuck. Lith- for this... Yeah. Lith- Lithitania. There he is. Yeah. Lithitania. Supposedly a boy, actually a girl. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, when I saw her actually be a girl, it kind of works a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, I mean to be fair, she doesn't have a lot of experience voicing female characters. She has a lot of experience voicing male characters at this point, especially little boys. But hearing her play a more like an actual feminine character during in Arslan, I think it actually worked for it. But anyway, I digress. Um, but definitely, Terry Doty here, I think it worked. Because Yuko is a little bit nerdy of a character. Mm. And for Terry and her particular voice, I think it works. Yeah. Are yeah, you saying I Terry's agree. a nerd? Are you saying Terry Doty's a nerd? No. Yeah, you are. Yes, I am. <laughs> I, 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 open, I openly admit I'm a nerd. I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, it is hey, going to be interesting how she takes the character moving forward. Because mm-hmm. um, she does get a much bigger role in the series in the second half. Uh, and as for Lucy Christian... What needs to be said at this oh point? Oh my lord, Lucy Christian. If you do not know who this woman is, then you don't shame watch on anime. you. Yeah, it... you, you've never seen anime before, shame on you. Yeah. Um, Let's, oh god, long list. She's been in Air, she's been in Angel Beach, she's been in Bamboo Blade, she's been in Birdie the Mighty, uh, fuck you, Eloise Trancy, Black Butler too. Yeah, she's Nami. <laughs> um, yep, she's- Nami from One Piece, that's probably the largest role that she's known for. Um, but there's also Clan A, there's also Corpse Princess again, uh, D. Grey Man, Demon King Daimo, Desert Punk... Fullman Alchemist. Oh, God. So much. Full Metal Panic? Full Metal Panic. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Log she, Horizon. <laughs> in terms of sheer number of roles, Lucy has is second only to Monica Real. Yep. So. She's also Duck from Princess Tutu. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to find major roles. She's in Sergeant Frog. She's in Shiki. She's Medusa from Soul Eater. She's pretty much in everything that, yeah. that's a Texas dub. Yeah. She she took over the role from Meryl Strife in the Trigun film. Uh, any other ones? The world God only knows. You get the point. You get the point. This woman done a lot. Mm-hmm. But in terms of uh, Murano, it's not what I expected. Oh, to really? To be perfectly honest. 
I don't know. I feel kind of iffy about it. You think she's just phoning it in at this point? I wouldn't necessarily... I don't want to say she's phoning it in. I don't think she is. It's just considering the personality and the character of Murano herself, Lucy's voice just doesn't seem to fit, hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. And I love Lucy Christian to death. She's one of my favorite female voice actors, actresses ever. But in this role, I don't know. Maybe there's an adjustment period that I need for it. Hmm. But right now, I'm kind of meh. It just seems like Lucy is just being Lucy. Right. I feel like there's Nami vibes coming in when there shouldn't be. See, that's why I originally predicted uh, Brittany Karbowski, because I think I think she might have... She's played these types of characters before, and, uh, well, I mean, so has Lucy as well, but, I mean, I think... See, where I had Lucy, I actually had Lucy in my predictions for two different places. I had her as a second choice for Migi, and then I also had her for Kana. Mm -hmm. I also had her for Kana. Mm -hmm. I felt like with Kana's personality, Lucy would fit in a a much better compared to Murano. I mean, I have no real problem with it. I mean, it's just, it's another Lucy Christian role, so... Mm-hmm. I mean, so I really have nothing to say. My general thoughts on the dub in general for everyone is it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> it, it serves its purpose. It doesn't offend me. It's just, well, I mean, it's the same thing I have with like a dub for Sword Art Online. I hate that show, but the dub is okay. The dub yeah. does not offend me. So, I mean, you're, you're going to have your spectacular dubs. You're going to have your... Um, your bebop and you're gonna have well i mean you can't even have bebop anymore that's that was like a damn yeah but um i mean you have your, your current shows coming out like blood blocking battlefront and whatnot and these are just going to be noteworthy spectacular dubs basically and, anything directed by mike mcfarland and occasionally christopher bevins i will say this because mm-hmm. pink the, the dub for ping pong the animation though mm-hmm. that's a good one right. I yeah one. i'm really I'm really liking Chris Bevan's dubs these days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's doing amazing work. And you know, I like, didn't even have a problem with them in the early days of Funimation either. Like, Samurai 7 was probably one of the best early Funimation dubs out there. Right. But he's really... I don't know what happened all of a sudden, but Chris Bevan's is really coming into his own. Mm-hmm. I would definitely say Ping Pong. Arslan has been doing much better lately. Um, gangsta for what it is, it's a good dub. Mm-hmm. Um, probably, yeah. probably the best of the summer broadcast dubs. Well, that's uh, that's not much of a competition, all things considered. Well, yeah, well, it's certainly better <laughs> written than uh, than prison school, which for obvious reasons. But uh, but then you also had Sky Wizards Academy. Yeah, well, and I, think, and I think which for what it no, was was an okay dub, but for yeah, what it is, Felicia yes. was a goddess to stick with that dub and make it actually watchable. All hail our wonderful adult Felicia on jail. Yes, all hail, <laughs> but yes, and I hope she does get more directorial work Absolutely. in the future. Because she, you know, she really did a good job with Sky Wizards, I, I do have to say. What I'm kind of hoping for, because I know at the time of recording this, um, the announcements for castings for both Noragami and Attack on Titan Jr. High have not come out yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would though, to not... Be, to be fair, they're probably going to be the same casting, but what I'm hoping for is a situation like with um, Christopher Bevins and Jeremy Inman between Gangsta and... And um, Arslan, because they were the ass- uh, director and assistant for both. I'm kind of hoping, because Felicia has worked with Mike McFarland on Blood Blood K Battlefront, they'll be a director and assistant on both shows, so they can go back and forth between them. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my hope there. Yeah. But anyways, we're we're getting We're getting way... off track again. Yes. Like always. Yes. What else is new? Keep it together. Keep it together. Keep it together. <laughs> what else is new? Yeah. We derail all the time. Yeah, this is dub talk. It's derail talk. <laughs> <laughs> we we just need to add the goats and Master Keaton and we're good. Yes, it's like rails where we're going. We don't need rails. Uh. Multi track drifting. <laughs> <laughs> we're not even on the Mike McFarland train today, and we're all over the place. It's great. <laughs> we're on the Kyle Jones train. That's where hey, we are today. Hey, hey Lilac. Like, well, yes. guess what? What? Teletubbies. Oh fuck. <laughs> We're not, like talking about sh- we're not talking about show mean sample right now, though. 
We can bring it up when we talk about Show Me Sample. Nah. <laughs> we'll bring it up again. <laughs> Just I feel you, like I'm Ruth. walking into something here. You don't um, want to know. Well, no, Actually, you uh, do. I'll was, tell you I later. Think it, I think it was either the it was either the Blood Ball Cave Battlefront episode or the Seraph episode where they came up. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you the story later. Um, anyway, back to Lucy. <laughs> Personally, it's kind of meh to me right now. It's not bad, but at the same time, it's it's Lucy Christian being Lucy Christian. You know, I'd have to agree on that, but it's not quite square peg round hole. Right. Like, it's, it's it, like most, a... it mostly works, but, you know, sometimes, like you said, you do catch a little bit of Nami or mm -hmm. one of her other roles that doesn't quite fit. Yeah. It's like getting a pizza from Little Caesars. It's not the best, but it it's tastes okay and keeps you going, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, you know, I do a step up. Get a pizza hut? Do a Domino's or a Pizza Hut. Yeah. Because <laughs> it is it's... Lucy Christian. We know yeah. she, she has the talent, right? Right. We know Lucy Christian is capable of amazing work. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just not there. Right. And it may, you know, later it in the series. It may get better. That point. It may get better. Um, though, again, with Terry Doty, I love where Terry Doty is going with Yuko right now. Oh, yeah. And I can't wait to, I can't wait to see what she plans to do with it next. So I'm excited there. <laughs> yeah, especially with the second half of the, uh, of the first, of the first half of the series, uh, the second quarter, I should say. Mm hmm And, uh, and the end of the series, because that's when she, her character really comes into her own. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. So, I guess it's safe to say we should move on to our final two. Oh, yes. Our wonderful, wonderful leads. Uh, Shinichi Izumi and his wonderful right-hand parasite man, Migi. Mm -hmm. His right, literally, his right-hand man. Ba-dum. <laughs> ba I'll see myself out. Uh, Those two are just inseparable, you know? <laughs> and good night, everybody. Da -da 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 -da. We're here till Thursday. Try the veal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all week. It's um, just like Nina Tucker and her dog. Oh, <laughs> now you need to get out. Get out. We're not bringing Nina Tucker into this again. You couldn't separate them if you tried. Oh, oh. for fuck's sake. I get vault. <laughs> anyway, Shinichi Izumi is our wonderful lead male character. Um, and Migi is the parasite that basically occupies his right hand. Mm -hmm. uh, Master in insert masturbation joke here. Yes. Yeah. This is Midori Days all over again. <laughs> well, hey, the show already does it, so... Yeah. Mm, true. <laughs> Shinichi, I want to test something. I want to make your sex organ erect. <laughs> anyway. The balls um, are inert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I sense that you want to mate with that female. <laughs> is that is that correct? <laughs> oh, Miki has the best lines in the show. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, predictions. What were you thinking for these two wonderful characters? Uh, okay, I'll come back to me last because it is going to spoil the uh, the reveal. So come back to me last. All right, Roots. <laughs> okay, yeah, I basically took, you know, I had a primary and a secondary. Um, and they do kind of have to be spoken about together because they're, you know, the Sentai power duos, pretty much. Oh, yeah. uh, let me guess. One of them's Chris Patton. Uh, my secondary was Chris Patton and Lucy Christian. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That and my primary, mainly because I had listed Chris Ayers as a director, um, Monica Rial as Migi and Greg Ayers as Shinichi. That's an, that, those are interesting combinations. Um, I will say, with your Migi predictions, I actually had the same two people for Migi. I had Monica Real first and Lucy Christian second. Monica Real, for obvious reasons, she can do really, really odd voices. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So she she would be like the like stereotypical answer if you were to predict something. Lucy Christian, I felt like she could also go there if she wanted to. Um... As for uh, Shinichi, I only had one prediction for him, but again, 
this is partially because I don't know Sentai's talent pool. Um, I put Josh Grayley as Shinichi. Um, cause I know he's worked on several Sentai shows at this point now. And Josh is actually pretty good at playing completely broken human beings. This has been brought up several times. And Shinichi does go through this big change and like has these moments where he's completely broken. Yeah. So I feel like Josh would be more than capable of pulling that off. Mm. Um, again, to be fair, I have not finished the actual series, so I don't know how far Shinichi's character progresses by the end. But yeah, when I went to Shinichi, I was like, Josh Greeley was the first person to come to mind in that one. And Hardy, we yes. saved you for last. All what right, are you th- thinking, sir? Well, for Shinichi, I just, I really just went default. And when I go default with Sentai Filmworks, it usually defaults to Chris Patton. Because yep. I don't Chris really, <laughs> yeah, um, I don't really know much about Sentai Filmworks' main talent pool outside of a few actors like Clint Bickham, which I did not, I did not think would be good for Shinichi. But uh, no, but I, yeah, I, I just I like de- the, the little I heard of um, mm-hmm. Clint Bickham because he was announced to take on a role in um, the lead role for uh, Beyond the Boundary. Mm-hmm. That little um, clip that they showed that I put on YouTube. I was like, because I was listening through some of them to come up with potential predictions for um, Dramatical not, Murder, not to actually. Say I, I, like, no. I don't, not to say I don't like Clint Bickham. Uh, I have, he has his good roles, but I don't think he would have been good for Shinichi. No, it right. would have been a good fit. And so that's why I default to Chris Patton. You know, I look at right. the artwork of, of both Shinichi in the beginning and later on when he sweeps his hair back, and I think Cl- Chris would have been good to play both of those two characters mm, eh, I don't know I mean it depends on if what the kind of situation that he's going with if it's like an Ayoto from Razafon situation I would co- I would totally agree with you mm-hmm. but considering the work that he's been doing recently I don't think so to yeah. be perfectly honest yeah mm-hmm. well the you know the second part of the series after the big change that's about to happen yeah I would have definitely thought Chris Patton would have been the big the big choice, right. but but the build up to that, it's like right. no. Dweeby Shinichi, I, yeah. I don't know if he would have been the right choice. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that would line up. But anyways, that's I defaulted to Chris Patton. So, but my and, my and main Migi. Fo- Migi, I have a story. Oh, it, <laughs> story time! Story time! Where's my boots? Sit down, it, class. Where are my boots? Time for a Where's story. My... This is adult story time. I has boots. <laughs> All right, it's not that big of a story, but. This is my. This is the way things happen. Okay. When Watamote was coming out, we all were wondering who was going to be the voice of Tomoko. Mm-hmm. And what they did, Sentai Filmworks put out this trailer that was English narrated for the Anime Network. Right. And in that trailer, the narrator, at, or Tomoko herself, was voiced by. Um, Brittany Karbowski. Right. And so everyone jumped to conclusions and said, okay, it seems that Brittany Karbowski is going to be the voice of Tomoko in the Watamote dub. If the dub, they were still, they were saying, if it gets a dub. As it turns out, that was Monica Rial right. for the Watamote dub. Yes. Fast forward to this year, and we're all talking about who's going to be in the Parasite dub. I predict, you know, I think. Monica Rial would be really good as Migi. Right. And I even told her this on Twitter. I think you would be really good. And she favorited it and said thank you and all that. Because I think she, I, I do think she would have been a really good choice. It turns out it's Brittany Karbowski. <laughs> yes. And so they've, both of my predictions were dead wrong in both cases. T- <laughs> so. It's really interesting that you bring up the whole trailer thing because um, now the suspicion is on for, um. Monthly Girls Nozaki Kun. Oh, it, it's, it is that gonna... is getting a dub. Yeah. And in the Anime Network trailer, the person who voices over um, Sakura is Monica Rial. Mm. So the suspicion is going to be very strong with that one. Um, but yes, as you have mentioned uh, just now, uh, Brittany Karbowski voices Migi, the right hand man of Shinichi. Mm. And um, as for Shinichi himself, that is actually he is actually voiced by Adam Gibbs. Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, Brittany Karbowski, um, she's been around for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may have heard her 
in Akamega Kill, if you're looking for something else that's very recent. Uh, Angel Beats, Beyond the Boundary is another recent one. Uh, Certain Magical Index. Um, she was the goddamn Maho. <laughs> Ugh, and Penny Pony Dash. Yep. I could not uh, stand that role. Oh. She's in Le Chavalier Dayon. She is in... Where are you? Um, she's Wendy in Fairy Tale. Uh, she is in Ghost Town. She is in Hog and I. She's Black Star. Black Star from Soul Eater. I was gonna get to that eventually. Mm -hmm. High School of the Dead. Um, Infinite Stratos. Jormungand. She's done quite a quite a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. She has a good amount of credits to her name as of now. Brittany is to the ADV days what Bryn April is to Funimation these days. Right. She got her start really young right out of... Well, I think she was still in high school when she recorded Gilgamesh. So, mm. so yeah, ever since then, she's been... She's been just, you know, in role after role after role. And I think Bryn April is the new Brittany Karbowski in that sort of sense. In that sense, I can probably agree with you. Yeah. Um, as for Adam Gibbs, he is very new. Mm -hmm. um, here is his list of... Roles, uh, literally, Akame Ga Kill, Appleseed Alpha, Beyond the Boundary, as, uh, Hiromi Na Nase, mm -hmm. uh, Black Bullet, God damn it, I'm spoiling myself again, Dramatical Murder, <laughs> um, Grave of the Fireflies, Hockey Den, uh, Hockey Yoki, Hematora is nice, oh, that's another one I gotta see then, mm -hmm. Harlock, uh, Space Pirate the Movie, Heaven's Memo Pad, uh, Hiro no Kakara. Kakura, uh, Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere, Kamisama Dolls, Magical Warfare, Mardok Scramble, the second and third film, Parasite, Penguin Drum, Say I, Lo Say I Love You, Towa to No Kwan, whatever the fuck that is, Suritama, and On Go. So he is still, he's he's been working with Sentai probably in the past, I would say in the past five to ten years. Not um, even that, really. Not I don't, even that. I'm just I don't trying, think I'm just Sentai's trying to been around for 10 years. Oh, that's true. I'm just trying to gauge it, considering, like, On Go is, an, is one of their older ones. Mm, On Go, Go is was 2012. Oh. Shit, really? Yeah. Wow, my sense of time is terrible. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I think the oldest thing on that list is probably Apple... No, not even Apple Seed Alpha. That's been recent. Um, yeah, that was, um, that was like I a year get, or two ago. Yeah, no, I'm confusing it with Apple Seed X Machina. That's right. Yeah, I if, think... any, if anything, I would say it's possible because Sentai has been re-licensing re things mm -hmm. and rescuing things. So it's kind of hard to gauge what, what dubs are old now <laughs> right. with Sentai because they rescue a lot of things. Well, yeah, I'd say the God oldest thing. Them. God yeah. bless them, yes. Yeah. Hey, Garashi, God bless you. <laughs> Honestly, Ungo probably is the oldest thing here, and it's only 2012. So, right. I mean... It's, that's that show is only three years old. Yep. So yeah, Adam and Gibbs is uh, very very new. Very very new. And you want to know who he reminds me of? Who? I think Austin, I know. Austin yep. Tindall. Yeah. Gee. I mean, it, gee. I mean, it doesn't help that considering if you put because again we're gonna take Tokyo Ghoul because Austin Tindall is Kanake in Tokyo Ghoul. It doesn't help that Tokyo Ghoul and um, Parasite they have a decent amount of parallels to each other, with Shinichi and Kaneki being one of the larger ones in terms of their characters. Mm -hmm. And both of them sound... Like, Adam Gibbs sounds so similar to Austin Tyndall, it's not even funny. Um, kind of a funny story. Um, I had basically done a cast list for just about every major studio for Parasite. Mm -hmm. My, uh... One of my early Funimation predictions pretty much ended up a dead ringer for how the Tokyo Ghoul dub ended up. You had Austin Tyndall, didn't you? I had Austin Tyndall, I had Monica Rial, I had my Brina God. Palencia. Oh my I God. I even had Tatum. Where did you have Tatum? I'm curious. Um, I want to say it was either the dad or Mr. A. Dude, I could potentially see him as the dad, but Mr. A, that would have been fucking scary. <laughs> that would have been scary if Tatum was Mr. A. I'd be like, whoa. Like, he could probably pull it off, but holy crap. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I, I do think it's more than coincidence that Adam does give off such Austin Tindall vibes, considering these shows mm -hmm. are, are very quite similar to each other. 
Right. And I, I, I would argue that Shinichi's life isn't totally ruined like uh, like Kaneki's is. Mm-hmm. So he has a bit more positivity than Kaneki does. But in my opinion, Adam hasn't really... It's there, but he hasn't broken yet like Kaneki has. With Austin, you can tell that he, he had a lot more feeling. Right. Yeah. I, I well, think the performance is good, but, you know, we're still very, very early. We have Yeah, Shinichi's character is a little bit different, though, in terms of Kaneki. Mm-hmm. Shinichi doesn't necessarily break, but he has, a, like, a... What's the best way to describe A meltdown? It? No, not a meltdown. Um, Roots, help me. What's the best way of describing this? Oh, um... Yeah, I'm trying to find the word for it, too. It's, like, um, probably kind of like a personality switch a little. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A 180. Mm-hmm. Basically, like Shin- like you 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 see how Shinichi is here in the beginning, completely different by like the halfway point or so. Even by episode six or seven, he starts mm-hmm. to change. He starts to change. It's it's much more clear by the halfway point, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Spoiler alert. Spoiler. But um, like he, I guess you could say he kind of does break a little bit. But then again, at the same time, he has a complete personality change mm. as well. Yeah. Compared to Kaneki, who just ends up, who just ends up and breaking and and he goes semi psychotic aspect of personality to him. Mm. I would have to say for Adam Gibbs, so far he plays a wonderful little dork. I like it. I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, and again, Austin Tindall vibes. That, I don't know if that helps or hurts him a little bit, though. Because with Tyndall, I mean, before this year even started, I wasn't a huge Tyndall fan. But now I'm a huge Tyndall fan. Right. No, it, yeah, it, 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 might a- ac- it might actually hurt his case because they're so similar. Because now the two characters are going to be compared to each other even more. It doesn't help that the two characters were compared even before the dubs came out. Yeah. But... I think what's going to be the real test for Adam Gibbs is when Shinichi does make that change. Right. Mm-hmm. Because it does go in a different direction to, compared to what Tyndall had to do for Kaneki. So that'll probably be the big test for Adam Gibbs there. And as for Brittany Karbowski, she's my favorite. <laughs> she is awesome in this role. She's my favorite. She has, she's such, she's, oh God. She has yeah. the best lines. But I was eating it. <laughs> I was eating it. I'm so sleepy now. <laughs> Shinichi, that's cold. <laughs> yeah, she she nailed it. Episode one and oh moving God, on to two amazing. and three. She, just, I would argue, she not only nailed it, but she keeps getting better each episode. Yeah, as Migi is developing and exactly. becoming smarter, um, yeah, you can really tell that that her voice is is developing along with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, easily Migi's easily the best performance in this dub, and someone might easily might argue that she sounds too robotic. That's the point. Yep. Migi yeah. is an alien parasite who does not understand emotions or It's it's basically there's that part and then like the development of the parasite. It's like if you have a parasite is like an infant baby mm-hmm. and they're right. growing and developing into an adult in a sense. It's the same idea. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna be able to really speak well or have like different certain inflections or understand emotion when at a certain young age Mm -hmm. and then as you keep growing you start learning and you start developing the more you find out and you do and yeah and you develop basically and with Brittany Karbowski she is doing that with Mm Migi like she's making it making the character grow and progress as Migi is developing and learning more about human the human world and society and I think it is absolutely wonderful (laughs) Easily the best it. part of the dub, yeah. Absolutely. And again, Miki has the best lines of the dub so far. <laughs> <laughs> again, Shinichi, I need to make your sex organs erect. <laughs> <laughs> That's still my favorite line of the first three episodes. Like, Shinichi, I'm detecting bl- urine in your bladder. It is not healthy for you to hold it in. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I am kind of curious because... Um... You know, that crown for Miki is kind of taken later on in the series by another character, and uh, I am kind of curious to see how that one's handled. Are you referring to Mouth Parasite? Um, in a way, but I'm also referring to a certain someone else. I don't know if you managed to get to him yet. I don't know. Is it Goto? 
Yeah. I haven't. I don't. I don't think. Or I think I I've met say, Goto, but I don't. I don't know. It's not so much Goto. It's uh, another another character that's part of Goto called uh, Miki. Uh, maybe. I don't remember right now. Again, I only got to like episode sixteen. I think. <laughs> I haven't finished the damn thing. Like, maybe with this dub I'll follow it from week to week, just, and finally hopefully get through it, but... But yeah, definitely Brittany is blowing this role out of the water. Like, I'm like, I'm done! You, you, you got it! We're good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then Adam Gibbs, again, reminds me a lot of Tyndall right now. But the big test is definitely gonna be the change that Shinichi goes through. Because that's what sets him apart sets him apart from Kaneki yeah. in Tokyo Ghoul. Thank so that'll be interesting to see where Adam Gibbs goes with it. Thankfully, that big shift is going to be coming up, so... That's going to be coming up soon, yeah. Yeah. Not to mention, holy shit, you're right. <laughs> but anyway, um, overall thoughts on the dub so far? I've given mine already, and that is... It's serviceable. I mean, mm -hmm. there, other than... Brittany as Migi, who was like the one big standout role. Um, everything else does its job, really. Yeah. I, I, it's like, like I said earlier, it's like Sword Art Online. I hate that show. The dub does not offend me at all. The right. dub, it just it does what it needs to do. And so that's, you know, you're you're like you said, you're going to have your big, huge ma master dubs, and then you're going to have the ones along the way that are just, you know, okay, I can deal with this. It, it, I'll say this, it doesn't offend me. Or has not yet. <laughs> if anything, it makes you giggle. <laughs> Mostly Migi, though. Yeah, yeah. Mostly because Migi exists. Migi is the, <laughs> easily the star of the show. Easily. Uh, everyone else is just playing off of him. So yeah, he, They're second bananas. Yeah. Okay, and Roots, what do you think of the dub so far? You know what? I'm going to be a little bit of a voice dissension here. I uh -oh. am going to argue that Parasite the Maxim is probably among, if not the strongest dub Sentai has put out so far. Oh, really? Those are uh, those are strong words. Those are strong words, sir. Yeah. Well, well I, I, I think the Toonami run really forced them to to bring their A game, and they delivered. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Something like that, especially if they want to gain more exposure and fans to their production studio and everything. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, I have to say that I do agree with you, Roots. However, that bar is still pretty low. Because mm -hmm. even to this day, Sentai can still put out dubs that are not that great. Oh, no, but, I agree. I Yeah. But at the moment, I would put what has been put out of uh, Parasite so far. Mm -hmm. I would put that... Probably in the mid to high Funimation tier. Ooh, that's that's saying something. That's saying something. Those are those are some strong words. Mm -hmm. Let's hope it keeps it that way. <laughs> Agree, most definitely. Most definitely, because I mean, we've seen some Sentai dubs that are kind of um, yeah. Yeah. But that's mostly Stephen Foster's fault. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I mean, mostly. Well, I mean, or Janice Williams, or um. Or Chris Ayers on occasion. <laughs> Yay, Diabolic Lovers. Um, <laughs> I will admit I'm curious as to how Chris Ayers is going to handle dramatical murder, but that's just me. For me, I would definitely say it's a, it's a good start mm -hmm. for the Parasite dub. Some of the casting some of the casting is good. Some of the casting is like... Is questionable. Little, yeah, questionable to me. Um, and some are, gonna, are in the whole I gotta wait and see category. Uh, especially Adam Gibbs and Lucy Christian. Those are the big two I just gotta wait and see on. Um, see where it goes. Yeah. Though again, Brittany Karbowski wins all. Yes. <laughs> she wins all. But yeah, I would definitely say, as of right now, this is one of the stronger Sentai Filmworks dubs that I have seen. Yeah. Um, to, granted, unfortunately, that's not saying a lot, all things considered. Mm -hmm. They but are getting better. They are, they getting, are better. getting better. And like Rude said, I think the whole Toonami broadcast is pushing them to start really working towards like grade A products. Yeah. I think with that, and I've seen maybe one or two episodes of the Akame Ga Kill dub, and that one's pretty good, so been doing pretty good. Uh, then again, 
I only saw the first episode or two. I think, yeah, the Tsunami broadcast is kind of helping them push towards improving a hell of a lot better. Right. Yeah. So, and again, I'm just hoping it stays that way. Yeah. Well, I recently watched, uh, what was it, Outbreak Company recently, mm-hmm. and that dub was surprisingly solid. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, I think that might have been a Kyle Jones dub. I've heard some dubs from Kyle Jones that were not that great. Right. But, uh, yeah, he did yeah. direct. he did direct Outbreak Company. Because I also recently listened to No Game, No Life, and I thought it could have used a lot of work. So Yeah. But that was mainly but, because of him trying to use... Well, Caitlin French is not a good voice actress at all, uh, in my personal opinion. No offense, but... Uh, but, I mean, just, just it's mainly from him trying to use new talent. And mm. new talent is always good, uh, but some of them aren't that great. So, yeah, yeah, sort of the diamond in the rough. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, it, it, I'm just hoping like that, that Sentai especially keeps improving with their dubs. Because they have a good amount of properties that I really like. Mm-hmm. That I wish that Funimation would have. Because at least with Funimation, you know there's a high chance that there's a dub for it. Mm-hmm. Compared to Sentai, like, maybe releasing a dub, we don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Exactly. Tell your I'm, friends, wink, wink. Yeah, I mean, like, Haikyuu for, is the big one, really, where I'm like, why is there no dub? And then... They I'm, have mentioned that they're... That, considering it for the second season, I remember they, that. They, well, they, well, they would have to go back and do the first season as well. Exactly. Because but, but people, people have been wanting a dub, yeah, I remember. The, yeah, that, they said on their Ask FM that Haikyuu is one of the shows alongside uh, Nozaki-kun, where people are just really, really wanting a dub for it. Right. So. And at least with Nozaki-kun, we know that's on the way. Yeah. Because that was the other big one that I was really, uh, I was rather worried about. Because mm-hmm. they hadn't said anything about dub. And then I think, I think over the summer they said, they announced that there is going to be a dub for it. Yeah, they did. We, we just don't know when that'll be. Now the big question is whether it's going to co- get a collector's box or not. So, I think which they is did another. slightly hint that it was getting a collector's edition. Yeah, I would I would think with Monthly Girls and Zaki Kun because I think I think that was one of the more popular properties that came out. Um, what was it last summer mm-hmm. or last fall for Sentai? Mm-hmm. I don't know, somewhere around there. So I would think that one would, would potentially get a collector's edition. Yeah, but well, their collector's editions are expensive, though. I mean, <laughs> it's not Aniplex bad, but it's up there. But you know, they're nice. Like, they're, they're nice. Really they give you they do nice. give you a lot of stuff. Unlike Aniplex, who gives you, like, a postcard and, like, a 12-page booklet, uh, Sentai does put in a lot of stuff in their collector's yeah, edition. Yeah, Sentai at least makes it worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, you know, I, but, have, the, I have the High School of the Dead. The High School of the Dead one was pretty overpriced for what it was, but I think that's because they used a digipack. Mm. And I think they've gone to just DVD cases instead. But, um, but yeah, they are nice for what they are. They're just... they rape your wallet that's the problem <laughs> oh, poor wallets yes. uh so anyway i think the general consensus is with it, parasite and the dub it's good, good start yeah good start yeah. there are some places that sh- could use improvement yeah. but good start okay. and Brittany Par- karbowski wins all yes. um so <laughs> so now that i have your attention i am gonna bring this up and you're all gonna hate me for it oh no what who would win in a death battle? Oh, motherfucker, not this again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, who would win in a death battle? Shinichi Izumi or Kaneki Ken? I already know that was where you're going with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, God. Um, If we had to give an answer right now, I can't give a proper answer because I haven't finished Parasite. I know Megan would go into, like, ballistics. Just... She would go in so much detail as to why Kaneki would win. Yeah. Well, we the, both gener- know she would. the general consensus is anime Shinichi wins, manga Kaneki wins. That's what I'm generally getting as answers. But I mean, I put the poll up on it last night. Kaneki barely edged out a victory. It was like 56 to 44. Just split right down the middle. It was split down the middle for the longest time. Mm. But, yeah, but it's, it's a tough call. Yeah, the characters are so very similar, and then the, now that Adam Gibbs is putting off these Austin Tyndall vibes, I just want to see it more. <laughs> oh my god! So, anyways, yeah. aside from death battle shenanigans, um, if you're interested in seeing the dub for Parasite, you can do so 
uh, Saturday nights on the Toonami blog. I have no clue what time it's at. Uh, 1 a.m. Eastern Time, midnight okay. Central. Yep, 1 a.m. Eastern. Um, and I believe it's also on Hulu, uh, in terms of the show itself. It's on Hulu, it's on Crunchyroll, it's on Anime Network. Um, Hardy, they're releasing episodes on Amazon, the dub episodes on Amazon Prime, correct? Correct. That is how I watched it. That is how you watched it. Yes. Yes. And then I can imagine that, at least for the dub, Anime Network might be releasing the dub weekly as well. Uh, no, they are not. Uh, the dub will oh. be available sometime after the DVD release, which we do not know. Yeah. But okay. if you want to watch it subtitled, then yes, it's up on the Anime okay. Network. It may um, be so, yeah. on iTunes as well. Because mm. I, I think that's what they're doing with Akame right now. Yep. So if you want to see the dub, you, you have the option of watching it on Toonami, uh, buying the episodes on Amazon Prime, and maybe buying the episodes on iTunes. If you want to watch it in general, then Hulu will probably have the episodes, and Crunchyroll and Anime Network will also have the episodes. And in terms of DVD release, we don't know when that'll be. Mm-hmm. Sometime in 2016, up more, more than likely, probably after the show is done airing. At that point, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. if you're interested, those are the only ways you can uh, go and check them out. Yeah, because um, we can't do our you know over 9,000 episodes of anime like we always do with the Funimation dub talks. We so. do too many Funimation things. I'm I, I will admit I'm glad we're starting to like branch away from yeah. Funimation They're just, dubs because we do so many. The broadcast dubs are just so easy to do though. They're That's so easy to do. It makes it yeah yeah. Speaking of which, we've got three new broadcast dubs. Which well, technically Funimation has six, but we're probably going to be only covering three. Yeah, I was thinking if yeah. there's enough new people announced for Attack on Titan Junior High, Seraph the End, and Noragami Aragoto, we might do like a compilation video just covering the new characters from those three because pretty much we expect everyone. Yeah. yeah. Or if or if all else fails, yeah, we could do actual dub reviews at the end of the season. But oh yeah, that makes sense. We'll have we'll have to see where it goes. I mean, unless the casts are like extremely different. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's say they that's brought that's Lee the in. only way. So I would say like if anything, Attack on Titan is probably the big one that's up in the air. Yeah, I hope they don't. The I hope they don't rock Lee it because unlike Naruto's dub, people actually like the Attack on Titan dub. Oh. Yeah. But um, yeah. The Believe three, it. The three. The, th- the other three broadcast dubs that are not Double Talk shows, Show Mean Sample, Dance with Devils, and Heavy Object, there will be episodes for those. Um, whether or not they will be after this episode, I am not 100% sure, because Megan had already recorded an episode for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and I do not know if that one will be done before or not. Um, but yeah, whether or not it'll be that, or one of the new broadcast dubs... <laughs> We'll, f- we'll see what happens, but, um, anyway, uh, thank you, Roots, for joining us. You are finally on an episode of Dub Talk. Woohoo! <laughs> Holy mother of God. I-, I-, I know prison school was a thing, but, um, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. It was one of okay. our best episodes, too. I'm just, uh, thanks, Noah. <laughs> I'm so sad. I wanted to hear it so badly, too, but maybe, maybe one day, maybe one day we'll get to hear it. Um, One day we will reconstruct it with the magic of CGI. <laughs> we can rebuild it. We have the technology. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, anyway, um, again, thank you, Roots, for joining us. Um, hey, no big thing. And uh, I think that's really it for us here. <laughs> again, Keep an eye out, because it could either be JoJo's Billar Adventure next, or it could be one of the new broadcast dub episodes. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, I think that's really it for today. Any any final words, final thoughts? I like cookies. Pasta! Pasta! <laughs> you will address me as his royal highness, Todd fucking Abercorn. <laughs> I had to bring the joke in. And with that, we leave you for the evening. <laughs> so, bye, guys. Keep it thanks manly. For, thanks for watching. Bye, bye.